The surviving victim in the Todd Colehep murder case faced him in court today during a damages hearing. This was the first time Kayla Brown has been has seen Todd Colehep since being rescued in November from his property. News 19's Lauren Thomas was in court today. Lauren has more on what they discussed. Yeah, Darcy, Kayla was seeking money for the mental and physical pain that she suffered while being held captive and tortured by Todd Colehep back in 2016. And this is something that she's still suffering through today. How long were you held captive? 65 days. Kayla Brown testified in a civil hearing, her first time in front of Todd Colehep since being rescued in November of 2016. Brown and her boyfriend Charlie Carver were held captive on Colehep's property in a shipping container for 65 days. Carver was found dead along with another Spartanburg couple found buried on Colehep's property. Colehep also confessed to killing four other people at a motorcycle shop back in 2003. He has since been serving consecutive life sentences for all seven murders. However, today his surviving victim is seeking damages and asked for more than $363 million for mental and physical pain and suffering. After the hearing, Brown gave a brief statement thanking her family and friends. I just want to say thank you to everyone for all the prayers and all the work you put into looking for me. If it wasn't for everyone out there, I don't think I would be here today. Brown's close friends were also in the courtroom and were pleased with the amount that was requested. Well, it's tough to put an exact amount on a dollar figure for the pain and suffering that she went through. And frankly, I don't even think you can put a dollar amount on it. Um, it, the dollar amount that they said for the $360 million for punitive damages sounds like an awful lot. Well, I can't imagine that Todd Cole has that money, but I'm very fearful, I think Lindsay is too, that Todd might try to profit from this, but from what we understand, hopefully the laws are going to prevent him from profiting and it would go to Kayla and the other victims' families. Now, Cole Hepp was representing himself and did not ask any questions or give any statement throughout the hearing, but a judge is expected to give his ruling uh, soon, but no word yet on when that will take place. Darcy? Lauren Thomas, thank you so much. You know, this case captivated the nation when it all unfolded. Our producers, Laura McElveen and Mary Soto, have the timeline of events. Colehep moved to South Carolina sometime after the 2001 completion of his 15-year prison sentence for raping a teenager at gunpoint in Arizona. It was two years later, in 2003, Colehep gunned down four people inside a Superbike Motorsport store in Spartanburg County. He paid $9,000 for a 2003 Suzuki motorcycle at the store in Chesney. Colehep said he was not an experienced motorcyclist and asked for their advice on how to ride. He says they were rude to him, so he went back to the store a few days after he bought it and opened fire, killing four people. The case was a cold case until Kayla Brown was rescued on Colehep's property. In 2015, he killed Johnny and Megan Coxey. They were reported missing shortly before Christmas and are thought to have been murdered and buried soon after. Colehep hired the couple to do work on his property. On Labor Day weekend in 2016, Kayla Brown and her boyfriend Charles Carver were reported missing in Spartanburg County. Kayla was rescued in November from a storage container where she was being held on Colehep's property. Carver's body was found on the property days later. Colehep was arrested on the day Brown was rescued and taken to jail. In May of 2017, Colehep agreed to a plea deal in order to avoid the death penalty. As part of the plea agreement, he was sentenced to seven life sentences in 60 years. The sentences will run consecutively. Cole have agreed not to appeal the sentence. If he appeals or escapes prison, he could face the death penalty. Cole have is currently at the Broad River Correctional in Columbia. Well, despite being registered as a sex offender for a crime he committed in 1986 in Arizona, Cole Hepp was able to get a real estate license on June 30, 2006, after lying about the felony charge on his application. From this, he built a firm that had a dozen agents in its employment. The case prompted state lawmakers to change state law when it comes to real estate agents. They passed a bill which requires anyone with a real estate license to go through a criminal background check every third time they get their license renewed. The bill went into law in May of last year. 